so let's start over here on the left side of our graph. We're starting with x is equal to negative 6. My transformation says I take the absolute value of x. So the absolute value of negative 6 is positive 6. So then what we did yesterday was then we went to the table and we said, okay, well, what's the y value of positive 6? I don't have a table created here, so it's going to be the graph. So let's say, for example, um, the y value of positive 6 is negative 1. So that means under this transformation, my new y value for negative 6 is negative 1. Um, let's say I'm looking, let's say this is negative 3. Okay, so the absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. I go over here to this side and let's say positive 3 is about right here. Its y value is, let's say that's a positive 1, close enough, right? So that means the new y value at negative 3 is positive 1. Now, I'm not really doing the ones in between, okay? Um, <clears throat> what happens if I'm over here on the positive side? Okay, the absolute value of positive 6 is still positive 6, so its y value is the same as it was to begin with, okay? So what happens here is that the uh, right side of your function ends up getting, oh, that wasn't very good ends up getting copied to the left side of our function. I'm trying to do this. Let me put this back in. Okay, the right side ends up getting copied to the left side. Because when you take the absolute value of the negative number, it becomes a positive number. So the y values come from the positive side of this graph. And they get mapped over there under the transformation. Positive x values won't change when you take the absolute value of them, so the right side of the graph remains unchanged. So this is one of those things. If you understand it, great. If not, I am satisfied with if you just memorize that that copies the right side of the graph. And when I say right side, I mean when x is greater than 0, it copies it to the left side. And the right side remains unchanged. So this one is very, this is the most difficult one to understand. Okay, I do, I do acknowledge that. This is the most difficult one to understand. Now, the other one I don't think is that hard, okay, because it's the absolute value of the f of x. Well, the absolute value of f of x, that's the same thing as saying the absolute value of y. So all this one does is it makes negative y values positive. Because that's all the absolute value does, is it makes negative numbers positive, it leaves positive numbers um, alone. So it takes all your negative y values and makes them positive. So risking making this more confusing, um, I'm going to try and do this on the same graph. So any of my positive y values, they don't change. Okay, so I'm recopying that part of the graph in green, and I'm just going to make my negative ones positive. So it's going to flip anything that's under the x-axis. It's going to flip it over the x-axis. Okay, so it took any of these negative values and it flipped them up here. Positive and change. That's the, the green is the absolute value of f of x. Okay? All right. <clears throat> um, so that's all on the transformations. Okay, that's all on the transformations. 
We do need to talk about odd functions because we didn't have any examples of odd functions yesterday. Um, but what goes on with odd functions is that they are symmetric about the origin. And that sounds really weird, okay? But what that means is if you keep the origin in the center, but you rotate the graph 180 degrees, then it will end up looking exactly like the original graph, okay? So for example, uh, x cubed is one of the most common uh, odd graphs. x is also a common odd graph. And then we haven't talked about our trig functions yet, but sine of x is an odd function. And since I'm talking about that, I might as well tell you that cosine of x is an even function. <clears throat> so cosine of x is symmetric about the y-axis. Sine of x is symmetric about the origin. So when you rotate it, it looks exactly the same as the original. Um, so let me show you an example of this. Okay. Let me say that my original function is x cubed plus x. So if I plug in negative x into that function, I replace all my x's with negative x's. What happens when we cube a negative number? What's the result? Negative. So negative x cubed is equal to negative x cubed. I emphasize that backwards, but anyways. Um, and plus negative x is the same as minus x. And you may think, well, this is kind of pointless, but I'm doing it for a reason. Okay, I'm going to factor out a negative 1 out of those two terms because they're both negative. So what do I have right here? I have negative 1 times the very original function. x cubed plus x is the original f of x. So that is an odd function. When you plug in negative x, you get the exact opposite of the original function. That's what f of negative x equals negative f of x means. When you plug in negative x, you get the exact opposite of the original function. Um, so x cubed plus x is an odd function. So let me show you which graph that real quick so you can see hopefully this rotational symmetry or this uh, symmetry about the origin. Okay, so some of you are more visual than others. I'm not a very visual person, but imagine flipping your calculator over, it would be the exact same graph. If you flipped your calculator over um, so that the number keys were at the top, you would end up seeing the exact same function as the original function. Okay, that is an odd function right there. Okay, uh, I also don't have neither written on your paper, but there are lots of functions that are neither even nor odd. Okay, just because x squared, let's see here, just because you've got x squared plus 2, just because those are both even or not plus 2. Mm, x squared plus 2x, for example. Okay, x squared plus 2x. Just because all those numbers are even does not mean that that is an even function. x squared plus 2x is not an even function. Um, so if it's neither, let me write that down. If our function is x squared plus 2x, say for example, we wanted to check that. Plug in negative x. Okay, negative x squared is the same as positive x squared minus 2x. If we, that's, if it's even, then it's supposed to give us the exact same original function back. It doesn't. It changes one of the signs. And we can't factor out, well, we can factor out a negative, but if we factor out a negative, it's not just negative 1 times the original function. So this is an example of a function that is neither even nor odd. Uh, it may have some form of symmetry. It does It, it does have an axis of symmetry, um, but it doesn't have um, symmetry across the y-axis or about the origin. So it may have some kind of symmetry, but not like the others.
Okay, so somebody asked me in uh, third period, like, what, what would they ask us about this? And I, I looked up um, what I have from the state about the final exam, and they literally just gave some examples of, all right, your f of x function is this. What happens if we have two times f of x? So you may have answer choices that are like, oh, okay, well, that's a vertical stretch by a factor of two, or, um, you know, they, they may list it in words, or they may give you a graph and four answer choices that are other graphs and say, you know, here's your transformation, which graph reflects this transformation, okay? So you've got to be able to recognize it from an algebraic perspective, in words, in graphs, okay, whatever it may be. I'm going to give you some more practice on this today.